Now that we have learned about TSNE, we're going to apply it to the IRIS data set. So we're going to build upon the, the program that we've already used. And now we need to load in the R TSNE library. If you have not installed that already, this is a good time to do it. Again, you would go over here to packages. You would set your CRAN repository or your CRAN mirror. Choose the one that is closest to you, but it doesn't really matter. And then um, you go over here and you so uh, you install the package. So that's how you do this. Well, we've done that all semester, so you should know. Um, we're going to load those two libraries in because we're going to need them. We're going to use Random Forest and we're going to use RTSNE. Again, sometimes you might get a warning that says, "Hey, listen, you got an uh, an uh, an outdated version." Not a problem. It's just a warning you may want it to update those periodically. Anyways, we're gonna load in our iris data. And if we type DF, there it is. And we're going to build a principal component analysis and we're gonna plot the data. So we've done this already. And there it is. So this is our iris data set here. And you can see that the two principal components tend to do a nice job of separating the three different species of iris. But now we're going to look at TSNE. Well, how do we do this? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to copy iris into a new data frame. So let's copy those in and we're going to call it DFU because we're going to want this to be unique. So let's do that first. So we just copy DFU, and if, let's, let's do the dimension of DFU, DFU. You can see we've got 150 rows, five columns. Now we are going to run the unique command. And the reason why we run the unique command is that TSNE does not like duplicates in the data. So this guy's going to go through all the data and get rid of duplicates. So let's do that. And see what we get. Well, what did we get? Let's do the dimension of it now. 149. So apparently it got rid of one row because it was a complete duplicate of another row. So we have less data to work with right now, but that's okay. So now we're going to run TSNE. And we're going to create this model, the TSNE, and here we go, our TSNE. We're going to use DFU, and we're going to use columns one, two, three, and four. Now we have to tell R that we want two dimensions. We could set it to one, two, or three. Most of the time you're going to set it to two. You can't set it anything higher than that. Perplexity, we're going to start with 30. That's the common one people mostly will start with. Perplexity, the bigger the number, the tighter the groupings. And we're going to look, the number of iterations is how many things is it going to try till it finds the best groupings. So let's do that. And when we're done, well, let's, let's just run this guy real fast. And so it ran this. And if I look, here's TS, the TSNE. Let's just look at that real fast. The TSNE. And it gives us all sorts of information, most of which we don't care about. But the thing we do care about is we've got this variable dollar sign Y. And one is our first TSNE variable. And two is our second TSNE variable. So watch this. We're going to copy the TSNE, that's this guy right here, dollar sign Y, open square brackets, nothing. That means we're going to copy all the rows, first column, and we're going to shove that into DFU TS1. And we're going to do this guy, TS2. So let's 
do that. And if we type in DFU, well, let's do that again. You can see that we now have two new variables, TS1 and TS2, and they're appended to this guy. Now let's graph these two guys and color it by this. So let's let's make this a little larger and let's get the data unique tsne now this thing is set to 30 and then we're going to plot him right there And here we go. So we got the black ones over here, red ones over here. Looks like it does a nice job of um, separating these. Let's let's just for visual comparison look at our principal component guys. So here's principal component. Doesn't do as good of a job, does it? So those ones, those other ones, seem to be a nice, a tighter grouping. I kind of like the TSNE ones a little better. So, but remember what from the lecture, if we run this every time, it will be a little different. So if we run this guy again, let's see what they look like. It looks a little different. Let's, let's move it in a little bit. And every time we do this, sometimes they get better than others, but they tend to be nice groupings here. Just for fun, let's play around with a perplexity. Let's set this perplexity to five. Now remember, when you set it to a low number, the groupings are not as tight. Sometimes you want a nice tight grouping, sometimes you don't. But that's the effect of, that's the thing you're gonna play around with is the perplexity. So let's run that real fast and see what we get. So this is 30, and let's see what we get with, with 5. Now, you could argue that these are nice, you know, that these do a nice job separating. They're not nice tight groups, but they do seem to do a nice job separating. So maybe you like in this, in this case, not all cases, maybe this might be better for a low perplexity. Let's set the number to a really high number. Let's set it to, oh, I don't know, 100. And see what happens. Oh, it gives us an error. It says, hey, listen, you can't have a perplexity that high because you don't have too many data points. Recall, we only have 150 records here. So if you want to use a perplexity that's really high, you got to have a lot of data. So maybe, you know, 100 is too, is too big of a number if you only have 150 rows. So let's set that thing to something smaller. Let's set it to 50. Let's see if we can do 50. And again, it doesn't like 50. Again, we don't have enough data. So let's try 45. Let's see if 45 lets us. Well, it lets us do 45. And those are nice tight groupings. Nope, sometimes not. Sometimes they're, they're not tight groupings, but they seem to be more tight than five, okay? So we could do this, and it looks like these seems to be, this looks like a real nice grouping right here. So let's use that one. So now if you recall, there's no, now look, for, for principal component analysis, I have the predict command. So I can use predict to 
use this principal component analysis and I can score new data. Unfortunately, it does not let us do that with TSNE. So they didn't incorporate that feature yet. So what can we do? Well, the best thing we can do is come up with a model to approximate it. So what we can do is we can use these commands right here. We're going to create formula one and formula two. And if we type in formula one, look at that. It's going to say TS1, that guy right there, is equal to some function of the sepal length, width, pedal length, and pedal width. And we have same with TS or F2, but that will give us um, the same thing, but for TS2. Now, what we're going to do is put those guys into a linear model. We're going to say F1, and remember, F1 is this formula right here. And we're going to say, build us a model to estimate T, the TS1 and give us another model to estimate TS2. Let's see how good those guys are at approximation. So we've got the models, and then we're going to create TSM1, TSM2 for model. And then let's graph it. So this is what it looks like in, re in reality. But if we want to approximate it using linear regression, it doesn't work. Why not? Let's find out. Uh, maybe we didn't. What is the error message? Oh, I think I know what the problem is, is that we I don't think we ran this guy right here. Let's find out. Yeah, now we did it with TS. I didn't actually run the model. So let's run the model. So here's our formula. Here's our model. And let's plot this guy. So well, let's let's go again. Let's see what this is, what the reality is right here. And here is our linear approximation. Nah, it's not a real good approximation, but this is what we got. What if we wanted it to be a little bit more accurate? What if we used a random forest instead of a linear model? Let's do that real fast. So there is our random forest. So what, what's the difference here? Well, this is reality. This is what the real TSNE variables are. And if we want to approximate that so that we can score new data, we can use our random forest. And let's see what the approximation is. Not a bad approximation. We could use this. So anyways, um, this is a very quick overview of using principal component and TSNE for variable reduction using the irises. Now we're going to, in the next lecture, talk about doing the same thing again, only now we're going to do it with our insurance data set.